Well, I've kind of always been like this, you know, I've always never want to give up, always put forth 100% effort, and, you know, I don't know, just something inside of me just, you know, causing me to keep pushing, keep, pushing, keep going, going, going. The only guy I've seen to ever catch AI with his own crossover. Yeah, that didn't go too well for him. Before this, Bob Sura was an advanced high school player in a small town, then went on to becoming the leading scorer in Florida State program history and having his jersey retired in 2007. He played over nine seasons in the NBA and was entertaining to say the least. After the infamous crossover, Iverson made it his goal to go at Sura's neck every time they faced off from then on. Sura once quoted saying, the mother keeps going by me. What do you want me to do? As coach Fratello combed his hair back with a, yeah, I know, look on his face. Robert Sura Jr., born March 25th, 1973, the white Kyle Kuzma. Let's look at three reasons he wasn't what was expected being a first round pick in the NBA. Salute to my man Blake the Great for this request. You know what it is, man. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth. Let's get it, man. Stunt number one, lost advantage. First off, in no way is this a shot at Sura's career because I respect what he's brought to the game and the things he's done when you take his entire basketball career into consideration. Plus, I like the guy for the same reasons I like Bobby Hurley. He has heart and he used his gifts to the best of his ability. This is simply why I think he could have had a better career hadn't he lose or was unable to gain certain things. One of his losses was losing the advantage over the competition he displayed in high school and throughout college. Bob Sura is from Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania and played high school ball at Gar Memorial. He wasn't highly recruited due to the lower level leagues he played in and competition he played against, but dominated his leagues, leading his teams to a streak of 86 consecutive league victories. He was a lot more physically gifted than the kids he played against, therefore he was able to perform to the best of his abilities by doing whatever he wanted. A player is only as good as his comfort level, remember that. It doesn't matter how good you are. If you're not confident and comfortable in the games, you'll never succeed. That comfort comes with preparation. Success is only had when opportunity meets preparation. Stay ready because you working hard is going to create an opportunity. Sura was ready. His advantage over high school competition was evident and he was able to attain a scholarship from Florida State who already had Model Esquire himself Baltimore legend, NBA All-Star and three-time NBA champion Sam Cassell. In his freshman season, he was named ACC Rookie of the Year in 92, averaging 12 points, three rebounds, and two assists. They lost in the regional semifinal 85-74 to number two Indiana. Sura came in comfortable, and even in one of the nation's top conferences, it was evident that he was a level more athletic, bigger, and had more of a feel for the game than his college competition. This would all be different when he made the jump to the NBA. Now he was slower than most at his position, and when speaking about position, he didn't have what it took to be the shooting guard his era was looking for. One of those things included stunt number two, shooting. It up his right ear, kind of flings it up there. He's having a tough time out there. Well, he missed his first 10 shots, and it has not gotten much better. Bob Sura shot 32% for his career from three, with a career high of 36% in Cleveland. These numbers do not display a clear issue because they aren't bad numbers, but when you add some context to them, they do. Bob Sura came into the NBA in the 95-96 season a time when every shooting guard was his height or taller. Michael Jordan had just returned to the NBA. The very next year was the best draft of all time, which changed the game of basketball for the era and introduced Hall of Fame shooting guards that could actually shoot and score in many different ways. Sura wasn't a guy to come off screens as a knockdown shooter or pull up on the break and splash you. He took solid open shots and that's okay. But what the league was looking for at the time came in a very different package that Bob Sura would never develop into. 
If you give these numbers to say LeBron James, who plays the point forward, they look more solid. But LeBron does a lot more than just shoot the ball, so he's always a threat. He doesn't rely on being a great shooter because he can drive, pass, and has the speed and quickness to get his on the break. But LeBron is the go, right? All right. Let's use any other shooting guard or wing that could put the ball on the floor or set up teammates consistently and or rebound and defend. Give them these career shooting numbers from three and it's fine. Sura didn't provide much outside of scoring, so when he's not shooting well, he doesn't offer much of an advantage, at least not at the shooting guard position, which was the only he could play in the NBA. Stunt number three, streaky. In my opinion, Bob Sura's third stunt was that he was a very streaky player on the NBA level. In high school and college, when he still possessed an advantage, Sura was a lot more consistent. It's to be expected on those levels and is the defining thing that can make you stick around and even be a great in the league. Consistency in itself is a very underrated word and concept in all walks of life. It's something I truly wish I learned at an earlier age and what I stress to pretty much anyone that's in need of advice. Stay consistent. In basketball, it's a lot easier said than done, especially when you're met by a level of competition that's equal or better than yours. Sura was drafted with the 17th pick overall in the NBA and played four seasons with the Cavaliers. He'd have games like the one against AI where he'd look like he had the potential to be a productive NBA player, but far more times when he looked like he didn't belong on that level. A lot of it was due to him not being in a system anymore like he was at Florida State. In college, when you're recruited to a school, they already have a role and vision for you that you can fill and exceed in. For a player like him, you're most likely going to be featured at some point in your career, and if you're ready for it, it can change your life. In the NBA, many times they're drafting the best guy on the board and not the best fit, so you're coming into a situation when you're an afterthought to the more proven players or star on the team and have to find where you fit in, if at all, and try to excel there. There was no one looking out for Sura anymore and his skills would have to take over and do it consistently. Unfortunately, that didn't happen in Cleveland and after having his best season averaging 13.8 points a game, shooting a career best 36% from three, Sura was traded to the Golden State Warriors. He played three seasons there and declined every year in scoring averages while not providing much else outside of that. He would move on to Detroit, Atlanta, and Houston, where in Atlanta his scoring numbers were his best at 14.7 and 8 rebounds. Had he produced years like this earlier, this may be a different story. In 2007, he was cut by the Rockets and took up his newly revealed passion of poker and has been off the grid ever since. All in all, Sura seems like a cool dude. His career before the NBA was amazing and his skills in the league led us to this great story. So I'm not mad, much respect. Wish you all the best. It's your boy JC, it's done a growth, I'm out.